It's Mental Wealth with Dr. T.K. Harris. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. This clip is for those of us who need to hear this. This clip is for those of us who are having a hard time or who know someone who's having a hard time. Mental wealth is something that everyone can have, even those who are unwell. This is for those of you who are in the shadows, who can't even make it out of the house or out of your room, or who feel locked in your own mind, a prisoner of thought, or stuck with people who don't understand you. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Follow me through these steps. Step one, understanding. Why should you hang on? Because there is light that is to come. Let me explain. There is a good reason why you've ended up watching this right now. I don't know what that reason is in your case. Maybe you are sliding down into a dark place. Maybe this is happening to someone you know and you don't know what to do to help them. And you've come looking for some advice. I guarantee you that if you are there, down in that place, this one fact will help you. You are alive. As long as you are alive, you have a purpose. How do we know? Because whether you believe in God or not, there is always a purpose to what is happening. Every living thing is designed to have a goal-directed life. The Almighty has told us as much if you are people of faith. You may be confused. Why am I alive and yet I see no point to living? I've run out of hope. I'm full of fear. I'm exhausted. I don't care anymore. I feel like a bad person. Why me? What's going on? There's a simple answer. The thoughts that you are having are not natural to you. If you are down in that darkness, it is the result of a loss of normal functioning in your brain. It is unnatural for any living thing to want to die or to lose hope. We are designed to have a zest for life. If you feel worn out to the point where you've lost that, then there is something predatory that has sat inside your mind like a disease. Just like bacteria that come into your lungs and give you a chest infection, depression or other mental health problems can get into your head and impair your brain function. And when that brain doesn't work properly, your thinking starts to feel very, very low. Your confusion, your despair, your hopelessness, those are symptoms. And it is dangerous to confuse symptoms with facts. Symptoms are not facts. They're just symptoms. Unlike a lung infection though, depression and other such conditions are invisible. They take over your conscious control without you knowing. They make you think that what you are thinking is normal. But I bet you know deep down that something ain't right. You feel it. There's a part of you that wants to keep going, that remembers what it was like to be your normal self. The brain gets exhausted and overwhelmed stuck in some tiresome pattern of thought, like a mental trap. And it feels horrible. But there is a part of you that isn't ready to give up. You're waiting for hope. And that is the part that will get you alive again. It's very brave of you to listen and watch so far. So let's come to a solution, a strategy to tackle what you're going through. Here's what you have to do. Nothing, 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 nothing. You are stuck in an abnormal and painful and distressing state of mind. The good thing to know is that these states cannot last that long if you just let them be. Like a passing flu or a cold, it will eventually just leave. Typically, it will leave within a few weeks. There's a scientific phrase for this. It's called regression to the mean. 
mental health conditions, like other diseases, often get better on their own. It stands to reason. You've survived this far, and you are at the end of the line of thousands of generations of people who may have suffered as much or worse than yourself, but they survived. And they had children, and they may not have had any treatment or help, but they still got through. How? Just by existing. By seeing it through. As unpleasant as it seems now, you can rest assured that this condition that's got its hold over you at the moment will lose its power and it will just leave if you wait it out. So what do you have to do to get through it? Exist. 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 Nothing more. Forget needing to do anything else. If you've got to survive on junk food and can't even get your life together enough to get a shower or put some decent clothes on, that's fine. It really is. Because all of this will pass. As a doctor, I've seen thousands of people who survived it and they just hung on. In those darkest moments, they just exist from one second to the next, from one minute to the next. Look at it this way. You've survived from the beginning of this video to right now, haven't you? For those of you who have really suffered mentally, you will know what that means. You will know how hard it feels to just get through from one second to the next. Count this as a success. Well done. Let's examine the negative thoughts in a bit more detail. Firstly, a lack of concentration. I mean, even as you're watching this, many of you will feel that you can't keep up. These words might enter your head and leave. And you might hate it that you can't concentrate. That's normal when the brain is struggling. You might want to concentrate more, but the more you try, the less it happens. So here's a suggestion. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Poor concentration is part of the consequences of having a tired out mind. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Why? Well, let me give you a reason. If you fell over and hurt your hand, you would have pain and redness as part of the injury. You would have to accept that. Well, part of the injury when your brain is struggling is a loss of concentration. It's a symptom. Just like the redness and pain in your hand, the lack of concentration in your brain will pass and your concentration will return. Some of you might struggle with obsessions. You're thinking about one thing that you did wrong, or you're unable to stop thinking about something that is distressing. Maybe you're terrified that you're becoming ill, or that you're going to die of poverty, or that you'll never make a good choice in your life. It's very scary to think that these thoughts won't go away. Well, here's what you do. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. As strange as that sounds, it has a power. When you accept something is unpleasant, you accept that it is a symptom and not a fact. You recognize that you are having a hard time and that it is unpleasant. When you make peace with the fact that something is unpleasant, it starts losing its power because you're no longer fighting it. You're just letting it be. And when you stop fueling it, it's like a fire. It loses its heat. And for those of you who are struggling with accepting it, maybe this will help. Accepting something doesn't mean you agree with it. Let me give you an example. If there was a storm coming to your town, you accept that it is coming and you prepare for it. You might shutter the windows. You might stay indoors. You're not agreeing with the storm. You may expect that it will damage your crop that it might damage your house. You are accepting the reality and the possibilities of it. Denying that it will come and not preparing for it will just cause you more damage. Accept that it will come, do your best to prepare for it, and then let it come and go. Mental health problems 
can often disappear when we just let go of our fear of them. Let's look at one other thing. Guilt. For people of faith, this can often be a problem. You feel you're being punished. You feel that your condition is a sign of your weakness. That perhaps you're losing your faith. Stop with that belief. You can pray if you like. But why would you believe in the nonsense that suggests that you can pray something like this away? Your poor mind is struggling. Why put an additional load on it and blame yourself? If you broke your leg, could you pray that away? Of course you couldn't. So what makes you think you can pray away a problem that's happening in your brain? For those of us who are Muslims, there are very few situations you know when people are excused from actually praying. One of those situations is for those who are suffering mentally, who are not themselves. Really think about this. This is what God thinks of mental health conditions. He is so merciful that it is one of the very few conditions in which he releases you from the fard, that which is mandatory for every human being, those with mental suffering are excused from because God is compassionate. He's saying, no, take care of yourself first. And to the rest of us, he's saying, look after my servant here. God doesn't excuse those who've broken their legs. He doesn't excuse those with cancer. So now will you understand that God himself is telling you to take a break from yourself? So you might be wondering about the purpose of this condition, whatever you are going through, this darkness, this pain, this distress. Why are you in this state? If you fell and hurt your leg, maybe that was partly your fault because you didn't wear the right shoes. But nobody falls deliberately. And it's the same for those who fall into states of mental distress. It's not their fault. Their fault. Their fault. Their fault. It doesn't matter. The truth is, nobody is perfect and we can all look at our life choices later on. But for now, let's forget that. Just accept and hang on. Focus on this. You are alive. 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 Some people are born with more proneness to depression because of their genetic accident. It's not their fault. Alhamdulillah, look how far we've come. You've already managed to reach the end of this first video intended specifically for those who are in pain. Thank you for persisting and thank you for watching. I hope this will help you. Go on to part two where we will find even more solutions and other strategies. Wassalam.